All right, the reason I had to make this special wrench, show you the spindle. Here's the spindle fully assembled, and the bearings and everything. But this, this particular screw nut, or whatever you want to kind of call it, holds, screws the whole spindle into the um, housing. And I can't really use this kind of a wrench because it, it won't even get in there and it would hit against the face of the housing. I don't know if you can see that here, but I can use that, I, I can use this kind of wrench here on these nuts here, like that, and this one here. It does work, it's not exactly the right size, but it, it works all right for this one, as well as this one. But I needed to buy, or, or I, I got this wrench, and I would buy a wrench, except that you can't get a wrench that would fit in between here, because I need to fit only 3 16ths of an inch thick here, between the, the belt pulley here and the, um, the notches in the wrench. And the spindle housing is going to be right up against the face of this wrench, too, when it's tightened down. There's only a very, there's only a very small gap of a, a little more than three sixteenths of an inch. So I milled this wrench out of uh, some Starrett flat stock. I may heat treat the end of it here a little bit because this is heat treatable material. I might heat this up with a torch and just quench it in um, oil and kind of temper it. That might be worth doing just to keep that from probably not necessary but it might be worth doing it so that I can tighten this. Into the housing. So that's what this wrench is for. Um, it, occurred to, it occurred to me on the last video that um, I didn't really show what this thing is for. I, I have shown it on a um, Instagram post, a few Instagram posts, but I had I didn't really show what this is going into. So I'll, I'll take some screenshots of the CAD drawings or the model that I made on this assembly, and you can, you can kind of get an idea of what this is. Uh, this is going to all be doing. All right, here we are looking at the model in the CAD software of uh, what this spindle is going to be mounted into. If I cut a section through this, here you can see uh, you can see what we what I've been working on up to this point has been, of course, this spindle area. And the reason I need the, the narrow wrench, you can see right here the green um, part is the nut that is going to turn and has to fit in between this gap here. That's only about three sixteenths of an inch wide right here. This this other part up above, this sort of orangish looking part is, is going to be mounted on afterwards with that screw you can see behind there. And you can see now as so you can see here the shivs that the belt's going to run on. And um this one up here, which I haven't, I haven't actually bonded this. I've turned this um, capto extension or, or a machinable capto shank is what it was started out as to mount this other shiv on here, and I'm going to also bond that with some Loctite onto that shank. But I'm going to wait until I can get the whole thing put together and orient the spindle here on the milling spindle, the Mazak, and then adjust the orientation of this with the belt on there and the shivs and everything so that I can uh, bond it at that location so that if I do some kinds of uh, boring cycles that orient the, spill the, the boring head, I should say, the spindle down here will orient in the right location so that I can do like a bore orient retract cycle if I wanted to do that for some reason. So, so the timing of the the um, teeth 
I guess you might say on the on the pulleys, these teeth here has to be in the right place for that. So I have to do that kind of the last thing. I have to bond that particular pulley onto this onto this extension, this capto shank here. So that's um what this thing's gonna look like. Let's see if I can uh show you a little bit more here. Oh, the reason these kind of things, these on the front here, these odd shaped looking, uh, I don't know what you might call them, washer like things or, or spacers is because the spindle, I want to use some of the bolts that exist already or the screw holes that exist already in the face of the spindle, but they're not at, at even spacing, which would work all right if I just want to put this thing you know one direction on the spindle but if i wanted to face it backwards say like this to machine back towards the tailstock direction i have to rotate this on the spindle so that it um it's actually the the, the second spindle would actually be above the mazak spindle then i rotate the whole b-axis to face backwards and in order to do that, I have to, I had to make these funny little, um, I don't know what this, um, spacer block things or something so that I could use the same screw holes with it faced both directions are rotated 180 degrees on the spindle of the maze spindle face. So that's the reason for that. Let me see if I can show you, um, the part here and the reason this is necessary at all. Now, these holes, whoever's designed this part has designed these bores back up in the ends of these pockets, and they have a close tolerance and finish on them, as well as they're obviously not on center line if you look at the end of the part here. And at first we thought about going through here with a long tool all the way up to this hole and that didn't seem very practical to do that. Although I have done such a thing before and I make a support block here that kind of has like a bronze bushing that supports the tool and then I can machine up in there, but I didn't see any way to make this undercut area, which is um, right here. It's kind of like a, a groove with 30 degree tapers on each side of it. And the only way I can see to do that is with some kind of a head I can interpolate. So I come in here with a tool that just clears the bore and then I can interpolate the, um, like if it's a double angle tool, I can interpolate out to the size and then move back and forth in the, with a helix of some sort and get these, um, this shape of the groove in here. If we, if we look at this in a cross section, you can kind of see the shape of that groove. So that, and then it all, we also got to put this hole in here. And the, and of course these chamfers on the, on the bore. So that's one thing that's got to be done. And then the other, the other end of this bore also, or big slot in the part also has this uh, bore here that's got to be done here so the best way we could think of to do this i mean they they were running this on a, a vertical mill and they're going to get a bunch of angle heads but with with angle heads like running on a vertical mill you can't change the tools very efficiently you, you can't really make a setup that repeats the tool lengths and everything so you got to manually change the tools which i will also have to do here but i can set up tools in this um in this ITS type connection that will repeat in length and everything. So I could set the tools up and all I got to do is use an Allen wrench in here to change the tools. So this works out a little bit better than a, they, they either got to have a one boring head and change the tools a bunch of time, retouch tools off and, and there's a potential for mistakes that way, or um, have a bunch of different boring heads with all the tools set up. And these boring heads are, of course are, or 90 degree heads, I should say, are very expensive items. And then they'd have to have a number of them to do this setup. So I um, 
kind of suggested this and we seemed like we went with this idea. And in order to interpolate that groove, I left just enough, um, let me cut a section to the part here. I left just enough clearance so that I could, I could move around in a circle or a helix actually, because this groove itself isn't that deep. It's only like about 45 or 50,000 steep. As long as I have that much clearance, you know, between this and this, I can, uh, I can get in there and do that if I make my tool just right. So that's the reason that we're building this thing this way is to do all this on these parts. So anyway, that's, oh, I needed to show that because in the last video, I didn't really show what this is all about and had some questions on that from people. And they, and it's kind of, it's kind of difficult to explain this kind of a thing in a um, comment, you know, or a response to a comment. So I thought I'd just show that. And probably this, this video is just about making this little wrench so that I can get in here to tighten this up nut thing that holds the whole spindle cartridge in here. But the next video I think is going to be about boring out this, this housing here to accept the spindle cartridge and, and getting that all sorted out and, and maybe the belt and the belt covers and everything. This, this also has to be kind of like, um, somewhat as best I can coolant proofs because that, that notch in the part, although it has a few holes that can drain coolant out the bottom, they're not very big. And if I use, um, coolant, too much coolant, I guess you'd say, or flow, it might fill up in here in the notch in the part. If you look at the part here. Man, I can't get this mouse. So if you look at the part in that section, and if this thing fills up, it could get coolant back into these spindle bearings and everything. There, there is some holes in here. Let's see if I can see them here. See, there's a couple of holes. There's a hole right here that goes through to the outside and one, one over here down here at this end of the part. So it will drain the coolant out. So I have to be a little bit careful about using too much coolant there. I also have a couple of O-rings in here that'll seal this off. And if I use the regular coolant nozzles, I've designed this such that, um, I can actually use the flood coolant on the spindle. If we look at that, that can flow through this sort of uh, circular annulus here and get up to these pipe tapped holes. And I can use that to um, put coolant with a, maybe a lock line hose or something up onto the tool. So anyway, that's the, that's the whole um, plan here and the reason I'm making this thing to begin with. So I thought I'd show that so, so everybody could understand a little better what's going on here. So anyway, this video is mostly about that little ranch thing. And um, like I said, the next video, I'll be probably be boring out this uh, housing, which uh, I'm going to use the, the spindle of the, of the, um, the turning spindle of the Mazak with a boring head in it and then feed this thing over the top of it. So everything should line up nicely with the a Z axis and all that is the reason I'm doing it that way. Um, could have, could have done it on its own, but to be sure of the alignment, I wanted to do it that way. So if you have any questions, put them in the comments. Otherwise, thanks for watching.